Dear Zero Conference delegates, um, dear guests of our fireside discussions, I know that you have joined right now from every corner of the world, and I would like to thank you for being with us. I hope you are enjoying this conference as much as we are. My name is Emanuela Zaimi. I am the founder and the managing director of Down Syndrome Albania Foundation. In this conference, I have been trusted the task of overviewing on the ground the fire set station. It is the best task I could get because uh, I'm hearing very interesting topics. The organizing team of this conference has done a great, great job in selecting both the topics and the speakers. Um, I have now the pleasure to invite um, and to have the discussion on a very interesting, uh, interesting topic, Mr. Uh, Dr. Anthony Giannoumis. Um, welcome. Thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure to be here, and I'm just completely honored to have a chance to talk about this a little bit controversial, but really, really, really critical, important uh, topic for moving the agenda forward when it comes to human rights and certainly with disability rights. Yeah, so we will be talking about decentering power and privilege. And uh, Dr. Giannoumis, you are a social entrepreneur, an advocate, a researcher, an associate professor of universal design of ICT at the Department of Computer Science at science at, in, at Oslo M Metropolitan University. Um, what do you love doing most among all what you do? I think the entrepreneurship work has really enabled me to give, uh, to recenter a lot of the discussions around important issues to focus more on marginalized communities. And so I've taken it as my initiative, my mantra, to kind of surround myself with as diverse a group of people as I possibly can, so that when new opportunities come my way, and especially in the entrepreneurship space, this is, uh, this is happening to a, a really great extent, I'm able to then focus attention on those individuals and elevate their voices. Well, thank you. That's quite an important focus for us as well. So, um, but what do you see as a, as a challenge while you're trying to um, decentering at work and, and all of the, um, within the marginalized uh, groups? Yeah, I think this issue of trust comes to play a lot. So when I'm in a position where an opportunity comes my way and I have to say no or not yet, and I want to give that opportunity to someone else who may have um, some disadvantages in their life. They may have uh, some kind of uh, characteristics or experiences that may put them uh, in, a, in a different light than someone like me who comes into that opportunity with a lot of privilege and a lot of power. There's a trust issue that comes to play when I'm recommending that individual for that position, recommending them for that opportunity, and the person who is, uh, or the organization who's trying to give me that opportunity looks at me with a little bit of skepticism, mm -hmm. and I have to kind of make the case that yes, this person may be young, yes, this person may have a very different experience than I do, but that means that their contribution is even more critical and more important than having my voice on a board of directors or in some kind of power position. Um, but what about, what sh shall we do to increase more awareness on, on, on this topic? May it be at uh, uh, corporate levels, but also on um, self-awareness of these individuals? Yeah, I think this is the kind of million dollar question here is how can we reform our institutions in a way that gives um, uh, equal opportunities to persons from marginalized backgrounds when it comes to advancing leadership positions. And this cuts across all, all possible uh, identities, social identities. Mm -hmm. So this is, yes, a disability issue. It's also a gender issue. It's also an issue of race, of socioeconomic status. And so we have to look at it multidimensionally, and then we have to radically reform these institutions to change the power balance. We all know about the glass cliff, right? Mm -hmm. Where women advance to a certain position, and then they're not able to advance any further. Understanding more about the mechanisms uh, that are at play when it comes to enabling uh, women, people with disabilities, and everyone else to advance to those positions is really, really cri critically important. Now, I've been able to have a lot of success in my field. One of the ways that I've challenged that status quo has been to purposefully 
identify, mentor, work with, collaborate with people who have a radically different experience than I do. And that's brought so much value and so much important uh, knowledge and experience into my work that I never would have been able to take advantage of if it was just me or just people who shared the same background as I do. I work in computer science. Yeah. The easiest thing in the world is for me to work with other people who look, think, and act like me. And in doing so, you're not going to come up with anything truly innovative because you're not able to take advantage of the diverse viewpoints that exist in the world. You're just looking at the world from one angle and one viewpoint. And that's why this issue of decentering is so critically important. Mm -hmm. Because when I take myself out of the limelight, when I take myself out of the focus, and I put other people whose voices haven't been heard or have not been heard to the same extent that mine has, then we can have real change. Well, um, yeah, and, and we see a corporate moving towards so uh, people with different backgrounds. And we also have the universal design principles. How do we connect all this um, together? So what would be um, your key recommendations to, um, let's say, those uh, corporate leaders or managers that are hearing us now? Great. So uh, universal design is my absolute <laughs> favorite topic. This is something that I have the deepest passion for. It's the, what I've dedicated my life to. And I think we need to reinvent universal design. Traditionally, universal design just focused on architecture or user interfaces of technologies, of websites, for example. We need to think completely differently. Because we can universally design a corporation. Mm -hmm. We can universally design our policies, our systems, our programs, our products. It's not just about the built environment. It's not just about the user interface of a piece of technology. And when we start universally designing a company, a business model, you'll immediately see how we can pivot from looking at the commercial space as being uh, exclusive and focused on taking advantage of commercial opportunities and start looking at the commercial space as an arena for achieving equality, for promoting diversity. And one of the most important aspects of universal design that challenges the status quo is the participatory element. Mm -hmm. So bringing marginalized communities into, into leadership and power positions within an organization to reinvent, redesign that company and the company's products and services. It seems like we need to universally design our mindsets as a, as, as a whole. It's about, um, yeah, it's about thinking from the start and having everybody on board when we, when we design everything. And we have also learned that um, because we are at a disability uh, advocacy and a conference and where we share a lot of innovation. Um, but I think, and I want to see if you agree, is that um, we ask for accessibility and inclusion because this is what we talk in our everyday life. But I think we should um, agree and uh, increase awareness also that this is beneficial for, for everybody. I mean, this is, it's, maybe it starts because of this community's needs, mm -hmm. but then we have seen many times, like in this pandemic, uh, with the ICT solutions and with the, with the need to connect virtually, that um, many of the technologies, as it was said here, many of the technologies started because of the needs of uh, the community of disabled people, mm -hmm are benefiting the, the whole um, society. Absolutely. One of my favorite ways of thinking about universal design is necessary for some, good for everyone. And one of my students once uh, quoted to me, and I've used this ever since she said it because I think it's just an inspired way of thinking about it. Uh, we work a lot with what's called user-centered design. Mm -hmm. And all that means is basically stop thinking about technology or our systems or products with like this siloed mindset where we're just, you know, kind of hacking away in, the, in, a, in a cubicle and then releasing it to the public, but actually bringing users into that process. Well, she said that user-centered design is only as good as the user that you put at the center of that design. 
Mm -hmm. And so I'll expand on that. If I put myself into the center of that design, all we're going to get is more products and services that work for, for people for, like yes, me. Yeah. If we put someone who is at the, uh, at the most marginalized end of society, the most excluded, into the center of that design process, you're going to find that those products, those services, your company, your business model will start working and start being able to be marketed towards the greatest number of people. But also not, uh, not only putting in the center, but also co-designing together with the user, right? Absolutely. We'll go back to the participation thing. <laughs> yeah. Co-designing and giving space so that they can lead the process. Giving up control, giving up power, and decentering the people who have always traditionally occupied positions of power so that those individuals who have not enjoyed those same privileges and opportunities can be centered and take it forward. Any advice for any person with disabilities hearing us now on... Um, like very strategic advice there on how um, they could mitigate all the difficulties in finding a, a, a job or putting themselves out there in the job market related always to, to what we are talking. I think uh, there's two things that come to mind. Number one, there's power in numbers. So mm -hmm. align yourself with your local disabled people's organization, your local disability rights organization, so that you can have the opportunity to work with them to champion the issues that matter. I think that kind of uh, opportunity can really change the game. Uh, and the other thing that I would say is uh, the, the work that we're doing here requires a lot of patience and discipline and persistence. And so be kind to yourself, be patient and understanding. This is not something that we're going to necessarily achieve in my lifetime or even in three generations from now. It's slow progress, but it's a very, very important progress that we're making. Uh, I like to tell my students that 250 million years ago, dinosaurs roamed the earth. <laughs> a few hundred years ago, we got human rights. So we've made some progress. And that's not to say that we shouldn't be challenging the status quo. It's only saying that we should be patient with ourselves. Thank you very much. I um, really appreciate what you're doing and because you're having so um, great focus, not only on inclusion and for people with disabilities, but I know that you are also focused on um, uh, women leaders uh, um, and gender-based issues. Um, we have uh, our friend Petra here that Beautiful. has been trying and I think not only trying but done a great job and she will explain how she was able to put in this sketch the whole of our discussion. I love it. Thank you. Decentering power was the topic and um, I drew power as a crown that you have on your head and the symbol would be to take the crown and hand it over to other people. That's the sketch I came up with. Um, how do we do that? We um, elevate the voices of the people. Um, we give opportunities to people who did not have opportunities so far. So we spread out opportunities. Um, of course, we also foster innovation in all types, also in the technological part, of course, but also social innovation. And the basis is um, the people who are experts in their own lives. So they bring their life experience, and I drew some gemstones here. So they bring like their values into things like things like what we're talking about, universal design, meaning not only is a building as accessible for everyone, but really taking the whole universe in, into, into your head, center the design process around the people, co-design and make sure people can participate and trust the process. Um, <laughs> Don't uh, don't be scared and be patient. That would be the last point. I hope I got it right. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. I, 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 I think I need you to come in and do a guest lecture for my students because you nailed it. That's a really good opportunity and a very kind offer. Thank you very much, Petra. I think we will do a picture, a group picture together to yes, have please. that as a beautiful memory. Um, Dr. Anthony Giannoumis, thank you very much for joining uh, and hope to see you every time in the Zero conferences. It was an absolute honor. Thank you.